Hello everyone. Welcome to Groundwater Hydrology. This is week seven, lecture two. In this week lecture series, we are looking at the recommendations from the uh, manual shared by Central Groundwater Board on what type of artificial recharge networks we could make and where it can be applied. In the last lecture, we looked at the multiple different types, indirect, direct methods, combination methods. And then we looked at different types within the major subheadings. In this lecture, today's lecture, we will get into more details of every particular type and how it is used in the real world. Uh, what are the issues, pros and cons? <clears throat> Let's uh, get into this today's class, the direct method. So as the name suggests, you are directly applying water and making increased contact between the water and the land, thereby letting the water go into the land as surface, uh, subsurface connection, go in as infiltration, percolation into the groundwater. Okay. This is the major aim of this method. Rainfall is kind of a direct method, but it doesn't give enough time. So the whole point is increasing the time. Okay. Flooding. So what does flooding mean? Flooding means ponding of water on top of the surface. And floodings are different levels. You can have floodings to your ankle, uh, which is called a massive flood in Singapore because the cars are very expensive. And if, if water goes into the car, uh, people can sue you. Okay. Whereas in countries like uh, developing countries uh, like Bangladesh and stuff, you still have water till your hip and knees and they call it as a flood. So you see the flood is very qualitative. What you call flood is qualitative. <clears throat> in this um, uh, example for groundwater recharge, flooding is a couple of centimeters of water thickness on top of the land because that's how much water you can afford to put on land. You cannot fill the land till like uh, one meter, like your hip level, then it is not going to be helpful. It will it'll erode the material off. You need a very slight amount of water, one to two centimeters thickness and always there. Think about a uh, agricultural field where you have flood irrigation, where which means just normal irrigation, you apply water to the field, it slowly goes in. Here, what you're doing is you're putting the water in and no transpiration happens. There's no plants and other things. Water would go in and recharge rather than plant taking the water and transpire. So here's how water comes. It comes through a channel. It can be a stream, it can be a river, it can be a canal from your dams. Okay, And then you make a sub uh, small diversion and that diversion envelopes a land. Okay. It covers a piece of land and that is your recharge basin or where the recharge is going to happen. So water flows through the delivery canal and you have sheet flow. As I said, flood irrigation or sheet flow is where you release water and it forms a sheet thickness on top of the land. We have the land and a sheet of water is there which actually infiltrates recharges in the ground. So water moves and then <coughs> flows as sheet until your return canal, because you don't want to waste the water. You don't want to just pond the water without nothing. You want the water to be flowing slowly on top of the land. And once it hits a particular point in the land or, or covered a maximum distance, then you can say you can return the water back to the stream or river. So only some water is going in. Think about if you start ponding the water, then water is evaporated, it's loss. You don't want that to happen, okay? You want the water to move. And while it moves, it actually recharges. It keeps on moving. Think about a river, okay? Water is flowing, it is constantly flowing, which means there's constant movement of water. However, there is recharge because you're maintaining a thickness of water above the ground, okay? If you shut down the water, water will move and then there's no recharge. Here, you are 
in motion, but at any time snap, you just click a time snap, there is thickness of water and that water recharges in the ground. Same thing happens here. You have water going in, it goes as a sheet, the sheet recharges and whatever water doesn't contribute to the recharge goes back to the river. So you're reducing the evaporation. If this is not there, if the return canal is not there, then it is like a big swimming pool or a pond or even a recharge pond. We'll see that example also, where water just evaporates. Yes, some recharge enters, but maximum water evaporates. So the net uh, water is loss. However, in systems where losses are okay, you still need recharge to happen. You have to give that water. So you have these uh, canal deliveries um, and then water comes in as sheet flow uh, and then recharges this area. Under the recharge, it can move different ways. Okay, As you know, this is the land. When water comes in, it can recharge like this. We've seen a lot of diagrams of how the groundwater recharges. It doesn't just go one dimension, it can go lateral also. So at the end of the day, you establish a water level, water table. Okay, an imaginary line of thickness of aquifer full of saturated. Let's take an example. <coughs> this is in the Arizona region. Uh, and you can see like how a big land has been carved out for recharge. And as I said, it is nothing is growing on the land. You see, there's nothing growing on the land. It is only for recharge. And it is placed at a good location where around it, there's a lot of agricultural fields which can use the groundwater. So if you can recharge here, these lands would get all groundwater and you can pump here. You can see a big uh, agricultural area uh, right downstream of the canal. So water is coming in and then it goes through this canal and it gets recharged. It goes back uh, to the main supply channel and goes uh, out. Okay. And what they've done is they've kept this area so that water can grow as a fleet, as a, as, a, as a good sheet on top. And that sheet recharges the groundwater up to a particular level and then goes off. If you stop this um, connection between back connection to the channel, as I said, then there is water loss from here is evaporation. All you want is more groundwater recharge. However, evaporation is also happening. So this is how water moves. Okay, So assuming water is moving um, uh, from this way, it goes this way. Okay, And you have um, a lot of um, <coughs> this, this part, the delivery channel, and then a lot of uh, inlets for water to go this way. So water is going that way. Okay? And it recharges. It recharges as much and then goes to this point the main uh, return canal and then goes back down. Okay. So this is how water can be diverted off the main channel. So look at it, water is diverted off the main channel, let into a ground, recharge and then help in improving the groundwater status. Let's look at another um, uh, direct uh, method, direct recharge method. It is a very famous method called ditch and furrow. Okay, here the name, as the name says, ditch, which is a big um, um, embedded uh, dug part of the land. You create a ditch, and inside the ditch there are multiple connections to furrows or furrows, and these furrows actually enhance groundwater recharge. Let's look at how this works. Okay, this is how water is flowing. So just keeping that in mind, I have to remove this. Uh, the gate and measuring device is here to just check how water is coming, how much water is going in. Because all those, all, almost all these methods, uh, it is good to have a monitoring uh, network so that tomorrow someone can ask, okay, you're putting all this water in, how much is the recharge? I put so much land, I've given you so much land, what is the benefit for that? It is good to have monitoring. It is expensive, uh, but if you don't have money for that, uh, it's okay. You don't have to do uh, gate and, and, and a measuring device. So gate is mostly important to divert the water. It's a very minimalistic 
construction is there no cements nothing it's just a, a diversion of the water through a gate or a small channel okay so water is coming here it is called the supply ditch okay the major channel that comes and after that there is multiple uh, branch ditches which come from the main ditch you see here and then um, it also has uh, deeper ditches of what furrows so you have all these ditches that are coming and then alternate diversion as required so sometimes it water can just stop here and maybe that's how the land is in that particular area to recharge so you take another land here and then do it okay so you have three ditches in this diagram at least the major ditch which is uh, supplying the water so this is a major ditch from the major channel it takes water <coughs> and then from the major ditch there are branch ditches or furrows that take the water and recharge then there is an alternate ditch just to extend the ditch and then there is a collecting ditch all this water which is not entering the furrows which is not entering into the groundwater can go back to the collecting ditch it just gets collected and goes back to the major river okay so here is where um, you could see that um, how it differs from the flood uh, or irrigation uh, flood uh, recharge type is these there's no ditches that is the only major difference and and the water is brought back as a canal here the canal is not uh, bringing back from the initial water, it is bringing back only from the surface runoff and the groundwater discharge that comes in. Understand that these collecting ditches can also take the groundwater, okay, unless you line it uh, inside. So, if you don't line this part, for example, if you don't line this ditch, then what happens is there is a big ditch and groundwater can recharge and then go under and come. So, all this surface water can come and also the groundwater can also recharge like this and then come out to the mainstream as base flow. So you need to be careful on making these. <coughs> However, it is a very successful method um, and then there's some slow analytics that you can look at and other, other um, things you can consider. It need not be only ditches, it can also be sheet flow. So think about the, the previous example water can be taken and after it takes water it can be applied on the top as a flood uh, recharge method which is called sheet okay so moving on uh, you're taking water putting into ditches and then collecting the remaining water each ditch would recharge by itself and then the groundwater gets healthy what is one thing you need to note that almost all these are next to the river and stream which means there's a potential of this groundwater to go back to the river. We have already looked at these conditions. When the water level is high in the groundwater, it can go into the stream or river if the stream or river in the lower <coughs> groundwater potential. Let's take an example here from Colombia. So you could see that the head ditch. This is the head ditch which is bringing the water and there are multiple uh, small ditches along the slope. So here the slope is mentioned. So what is pushing the water from one point to the other is the slope. And that is what is bringing the stream also there. If it is a flat land, why would water move here? It won't. It just stays there, right? So there has to be a gradient and that gradient is established by a topographic elevation difference. And that is what is here you can see a slope a slope and a slope three percent if it's too much then water just runs away it doesn't have to give time for recharge so you can look here that there are some um, water which is flowing and then it goes into these ditches inside the steep slope so the major ditch and then it goes into the small uh, zigzag uh, furrows uh, and these zigzag furrows are making the water pass through this because of the elevation water will definitely come but if it is a straight line, water would just go like very fast. However, if it is like a zigzag, then you're making water slow down in your path and that slowing down gives more time for recharge and groundwater recharge would happen. Okay. So in other words, just not making a line, but making it zigzag uh, in the recharge area would make water flow more time and then recharge compared to this, which is very straight, okay? 
that is why you see in some areas they would make the river meander so that it recharges into the ground i'm using these um, images uh, from uh, other countries because these have been published you can see the publication down um, and um, um, it's hard to get uh, these images uh, for mptl course without the citation so for the citations i'm giving examples from foreign countries however this works well in locations where you have um, you know a sloping uh, land and also a cleared land there's no vegetation on these lands just look at it there's no vegetation so compared to uh, the neighboring land here is also a slope but there is vegetation it could be land uh, use cover by forest or it can be also an agricultural field however here there is nothing so this is the other important aspect which i spoke about in the previous lecture of suitability limiting factors land use land cover availability of land do you have so much land to give uh, for a recharge uh, but in most of these areas if you could see the land is available only thing is water is not available so if you have 10 acres you should be willing to sacrifice one acre to recharge for the nine acres the 10 percent this is it's a rough uh, estimate i'm saying but that is how normally it is at least uh, you have to recharge in some locations you have to recharge 90 percent of the land for one percent uh, or 10 percent of the agricultural uh, area and that depends also on you if you want to do it if you have the money and luxury to do it you can do it so think about think about uh, areas like uh, deserted areas semi arid areas you have so much land okay but you cannot just grow everywhere you have to concentrate your water put it in one small area to recharge and then you use it as a groundwater resource or a pond or a, or a lake uh, etc moving on <coughs> there's another example given by um, the cgwb book uh, there are three different um, uh, ditch furrow methods one is the lateral ditch uh, pattern uh, three different patterns where you have a diversion structure and look at the diversion structure it need not be cement it just could be a mud wall a small embankment rise which makes the water go in the opposite direction or, or just make it turn so you're, you're coming like here it need not be a big um, you know, gate or, or, or a constructed cemented uh, structure it can just be a big lump of, of mud uh, or soil then the water will go like this uh, and then, as I said, you are there to make the water move in different um, uh, paths. It's not only the major uh, ditch, but also the sub ditches. Okay, so the sub ditches are there, which is called lateral ditch pattern. You have lateral ditch moving, and <coughs> the control ditch will come back to the main channel. The lateral ditch will also come back to the main channel after recharging like this. So the recharge will happen mostly on these areas okay so that's how recharge is happening moving on you have the dandrile ditch pattern okay. this is dandrile is uh, a similar uh, way you just make some diversions and then make it flow through uh, natural carvings natural ditches in a dandrile fashion which is like a uh, fingering like a flower pattern uh, and all this water need not come back to the stream there's no connection to the stream however most of the time you make small diversions not the entire water is going still the stream is flowing okay you can see that still the stream is flowing in both these uh, examples only a part of the water is, is taken away so you need to understand how much recharge uh, volumes you could send and only that volume has to be diverted Diver too much, then it is an overkill. You don't you don't um, send too much water and then waste all the water resources. The next one, which the uh, CGWB talks about, is the contour ditch pattern. Uh, where is at elevation differences? What is a contour? A contour is a, a, an elevation line, an equipotential elevation line. So basically, this line is one elevation, this line is another elevation, another and another. They are different. And we know that water flows from high elevation to low elevation. 
the same principle they will be using for this uh, program okay so how does water come water comes like this a small diversion is there so water would move in a torturous pattern it will move up and down and then come back to the main channel however because it is moving at the elevation uh, parallelly uh, to the elevation lines then groundwater would be recharged like this okay the groundwater can be recharged just because of the fact that it is it is moving along these lines where the um, uh, contours or the uh, major um, uh, elevations are changing so the contours are where the elevations are different okay so this the elevation is different from this uh, and if you do a ditch on that line the, there is a contour ditch okay and each contour <coughs> differs as much as you want like a can have 10 meters difference between them five meters uh, it depends on uh, your accuracy how much land you have and then you can make these uh, contours uh, as uh, simplified as possible for water to enter and wherever it enters it can recharge so all these three if you look at it what is majorly done is water is taken it is made to extend the path in which it has to flow rather than just flowing out it flows through uh, multiple paths to come back to the stream uh, line and while these multiple paths are making the water slow the ground water is getting recharged okay so moving to the last direct uh, method under the flood uh, or, or applying the water to the top surface of the land direct method increasing the contact of water to the land the next one is called the recharge basin. Uh, so as basin, what it is, is it's a holding land. Okay? In watershed uh, hydrology terminologies, basin means something that is catching the water and holding it. Watershed means it sheds the water. Basin, catchment, it holds the water. Think about your sink basin, same thing, it holds the water. Okay. <coughs> And we're going to construct that for groundwater recharge. Uh, it's not a basin for surface water. It's not a land, lake, uh, pond for surface water. But here, the major uh, um, use is surface water. So let's see how water comes. Water comes through this uh, particular channel, through this stream. Okay, And there is a diversion structure. And this structure, this is a more engineered aspect. Look at how much. Um, they have to do uh, for a recharge basin compared to a flood uh, recharge and a ditch recharge. The ditch is just digging. You can use a JCP. Uh, there is sedimentation happening. Uh, and to cover those uh, negative uh, impacts, this kind of method is done. This let me uh, go back and show uh, quickly. So these methods may have sediments coming in the stream, which gets into these ditches and the ditches can fill up. Okay, same thing here. These uh, furrows can fill up with sediment after some time because you're slowing down water. When you slow down water for recharge, also the sediments in the water will fall down and then they would actually accumulate in the furrows, which means the furrows have to be dug and maintained every single time as depends uh, as, as per the need. So here you have the water flowing uh, and then there's an intake structure. Okay, so there is water coming in um, and you <coughs> take it for the sediment retention basin. So the first aspect is you divert the water, part of the water is coming down, whereas most of it is going in a parallel fashion. Uh, and then the water which is coming down in the intake goes into the sediment retention basin where it is allowed to rest. It is allowed to stay for some time just to make the sediments drop. You're making it go in a fashion uh, in a in a in a fashion where it, it gets bumped by the walls of this uh, tank and then comes back it hits the walls it loses velocity water and whenever it loses velocity the sediments fall down so when the sediment fall down it is called a sediment retention basin you are reducing the sediment load and then just taking the water on the next phase phase two okay so what is happening is 
um, there is a reach. This entire thing is called a recharge basin, where number one is these uh, small segments of the recharge basin where recharge is occurring. And then there is an inter basin control. These uh, networks or, or, or canals or tubes, whatever it is that is taking water from one section to the other section of the recharge basin. So, what is happening here is you take water. You let water remove the sediments and then water flows into this uh, basin. It first recharges or just fills up this small uh, partition and then it goes into this uh, channel to the next partition and then another partition, etc. It slows down the water, but here the sediments are not there. So only water recharge is happening. And then there is a cut fall where water gets back into the mainstream. So you're not consuming the water. There's also less water evaporated. Most of the water is sent in, recharged, and then this sediment can only be cleaned. Think about the previous example. In the previous example, you had to dig the furrows wherever the furrows are to remove the sediments. But here, all you have to do is uh, maintain this uh, recharge sediment uh, retention basin. All you have to do is just dig this section of the um, um, uh, infrastructure, you don't have to remove any sediments from this uh, part because most of the sediments are taken away from this space. So you are actually sacrificing a part of your recharge basin for the entire thing is a recharge basin. You're sacrificing a part of it so that you can remove the sediments and then the <coughs> only the water that goes into the recharge basin will actually recharge and sediment is less. Okay. It's the same principle. You take water from the main channel, apply it uh, as a sheet flow, let the water recharge, slow down the water, let the water recharge, and then you continue back into the stream. So all these methods have been explaining the direct method. So where, are, where could this be suitable is the question. The suitability comes on the understanding of the recharge potential of the land, okay. So where uh, you have good water flow uh, and less sediment because if sediment is too much, then recharge may not happen. So it is good in the uh, alluvial aquifers, unconsolidated uh, materials, and the semi-consolidated materials that you find here, okay. For the because it is faster recharging, the 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 unconsolidated. Uh, um, um, uh, water potential is high, same as your uh, semi-consolidated in green color. So both the blue and the green are good for these kind of networks because you are supplying water from the main channel and then bringing the water back to the main channel. But in between, there is recharge happening. And for that, the potential of the land to accept the water faster is better. And those are available in the unconsolidated formations and also the semi-consolidated formations. In the majorly consolidated formations where you have hard rocks and cracks, this may not be a suitable exercise. Okay? So there are some benefits and concerns which I would like to go through uh, just for this method, the direct method. Pros, it's a decentralized form. Uh, a centralized water line. So the stream and the canal is a centralized distribution from a major dam. However, you can make sub uh, diversions as a decentralized groundwater. So this is very, very good and helpful for uh, taking water from one source and then distributing it in among other resources. Online canals promote groundwater recharge also. So these ditches and furrows, since they're unlined, no cement on the sides and the bottom, it can also recharge. So it is very important to have that aspect also for groundwater recharge. No need for major construction, no big budgets needed for uh, maintaining a cement or a weir or a canal, nothing. You have to dig and most of these government schemes, which I'll be talking in this lecture or the next lecture series, uh, you would look at how you could carefully use the government schemes to uh, maintain and manage these kind of systems. Releases can be timely and can also alternate floods. Suppose there's a major flood in the river. You could use these basins as to shift 30% of the flood, 40% of the flood into recharge basins. Think about it. You have a big flood coming. Okay, this is the major stream. And then you have this land, 
okay if there's a big flood then what you can do is you put a, put a diversion of water into it and then a diversion of water here so then what happens is this population uh, of houses and then um, uh, cities can be less affected by flood because you have upstream taken part of the flood and kept in the recharge basin okay so it can be timely uh, it can help a lot in attenuation of floods the cons the negatives uh, care has to be taken that the water is not lost before the canal end area farmers get water because you're taking water some water is lost so the downstream people may lose some water because groundwater is your land only recharging not downstream so there could be some some negative impacts of channelizing water even though you're putting it back some water is lost so you should always be aware is it going to be affecting my uh, ground uh, water or the surface water uh, availability in the downstream community requires area clearances and getting area might be challenging especially near the streams because the near the streams and rivers are the most fertile land because of the water resources and because it brings a lot of sediments the sediments have nutrients okay so it might be difficult to get a piece of land along these rivers or canals uh, for research but that is one of the challenges as i said and it requires clearing of land look at all these images that i've shown there's a big piece of land that you clear and nothing grows on it so you have to maintain that uh, it is going to be a land used only for recharge nothing else no houses no crops no forest can grow benefits need to be shared okay it's a normally it is not because you're pulling water putting it into your groundwater but the downstream people may lose some water some fish uh, may might be lost because some fish might come into your uh, land uh, so all this has to be thought about well and, and and documented how this can be negotiated is when you talk to downstream farmers and say okay i'm going to build this this is my might impact your uh, water if so let us know so that we can share some profits and benefits might need to quantify lateral spread so numbers is very important because you're going to uh, talk to these farmers it is important to say how much water you're going to take how much is released into the groundwater how much you're putting it back into the canals so you need to quantify these lateral spread areas so with this uh, i've gone through the direct methods uh, we've talked about all the positives uh, of this and uh, overall it is a positive uh, way of doing groundwater recharge um, and in the next uh, session i would look at more other methods indirect and the combination of these methods i'll see you in the next class thank you